I think patients and families, when they're enrolling in a clinical trial, primarily need to understand what's required of them, the required procedures, the schedule, the potential risks, including the unknown risks. And those conversations are long and many and what make up the informed consent process. But I also do think it's important for patients and families to have some idea of the potential efficacy of the medicine being trialed, which would include the mechanism of how the medicine works and how that efficacy or effectiveness is being evaluated because the patients and families are the ones going through all this testing and they're the ones who have the potential risks and the unknowns. And so providing information on um, endpoints is important. And one example would be sometimes these endpoints are very invasive, like muscle biopsies in Duchenne or things that are just challenging, like getting MRIs in very young children, four-year-olds who are going to have to hold still for a long period of time. And so for those reasons, I think it's definitely important that patients and families have knowledge and understanding of endpoints and outcomes of trials because it helps understand rationale for going through what they have to go through. I think that it's important to share the results as much as possible. There are some considerations to keep in mind when doing so. One is uh, revealing too much information during the course of a clinical trial could potentially impact how the data is analyzed and interpreted. So timing is an issue, and we definitely want to release results at a time when the study is ideally over and there's no issue about uh, altering what the outcome of the study will be. Um, and we also want to respect patient privacy, and so we have to be careful about those issues. And related to that, uh, it's important to work into the IRB protocol when you start a study, what you plan to do in terms of revealing results or sharing results with patients and families. So it's important to think about those issues in advance. It's become increasingly common and even expected that when, when an investigator designs a clinical trial, uh, they will get input from patient advocacy groups and support groups. And I think that's really important information. They will be able to provide important input on what are the what are the most important outcomes to measure for quality of life and and life expectancy for these patients? What kind of study procedures are tolerated or not tolerated well by patients? And just overall considerations about what's important for patients and families because in the end, that's why we're designing these new therapies is to help these patients live better lives. Mm -hmm.